day my teacher announced to the class that we were gonna do a Kahoot. I threw my bag of Cheeto Puffs in the air and screamed because I was so excited. I knew I was going to win the Kahoot. Everyone else looked at me like I was on drugs because of how hyper I was. They all knew that I was gonna win since I have never lost a game of Kahoot before. The game started and I was obviously the first to join. My username was Kahoot Master 235 of course. Most people joined and so the teacher started the game. Some people didn't join because they knew I was gonna win. There were 15 questions. I was in the lead but when I saw the leaderboard, this kid with the username you're gonna lose Sophia 89 was really close behind me. Everyone was cheering them on because they wanted to see me fail. I was like oh hell no 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 ratatata that ain't gonna happen. I couldn't lose my streak of winning. I got the 10th question wrong but you're gonna lose Sophia 89 got it right so they went up to first place and I went to second. I did well the rest of the game and when it announced the winners, I was in fucking second place and they crippled stretched edge here in cereal box tanky ho brick eating cockastain mama hippo jojo siwa on steroids bitch one. Everyone was applauding them and I realized it was Becky Necky. I decided since everyone was laughing, I let out the most wubble double bubble hubble nubble mubble pubble level cubble double shit. It managed to make the school catch on fire. Everyone evacuated and everyone was covered in smoke. Everyone apologized to me for laughing at me. It turned out I had bowel cancer and I had to go to the doctor since my asshole had third degree burns. One time we had a show and tell. I brought some of my squishies because they were popular. Slime and squishies were both popular that year. I brought my rarest and most expensive squishies because I was dedicated to win the show and tell. The teacher said that whoever brought the best item, they would win something out of the prize box. These kids were bringing the most basic boring shit ever like this one kid named Chattanooga who brought these ugly crusty ass rocks they said were found on the moon. I've seen that rock in my front yard so shut the fuck up. This other kid brought their stained white crocs. What the fuck is so special about those dusty ancient moldy off brand athletes put dunker monkey cock stain offensive crocs. When they took their croc off their foot I could smell it from the back of the class. It smelled funky, dunkeroid, hunkeroid, crunky, chunky, smelly, new deli, pork belly. Then they called me and it was my time to shine. I took out each and every one of my squishies and people started to laugh. I grabbed my real Kuma squishy and all of my other ones and started yonky bonkying everyone. I knocked smelly Kelly's front tooth out. I snatched squash and Natasha's weave out her head and I ripped out fat Pat's fake eyelashes. I was sent to detention and threw my extra squishies at the principal and the front desk lady. I was sent home and was expelled. I became sick and couldn't go back to school for a week. Is it just me? Like when you're scrolling through TikTok, you could be on any video and then automatically TikTok like scrolls down like a bajillion videos. Like, I'm sorry, honey, but I'm not finished with the one I was just watching. And you've just scrolled, you've just scrolled down like 10 videos. So then you have to scroll up again to watch the videos that TikTok just told you, no, you're, you don't get to watch these. Does that happen to anyone else? Because I've asked my friends about it and they said that it doesn't happen to them. What what is it about me TikTok huh? Why can't I watch videos? Huh? I absolutely hate my brother, and I'm not sure what to do anymore. My whole life, I've been told to leave a proud path for him to follow. My brother's one year younger than me, and I realize now that it's all been for naught. He's always been terrible. Fought with my parents over ridiculous stuff. He always wanted the newest and most expensive pair of shoes or clothes, and they would sometimes wait for hours just to get them. And yet, when I ask them to pay for a fee so I can go on my trip to Australia with my school, they declare decline. Meanwhile, he dropped out of school, something that my parents made seem unforgivable, yet they still house, feed, and put up with him to this day. I am a senior in college now, and all he's done the last four years is sit at home. Yet, I'm the one who gets assigned chores when I come back from school. He doesn't take out the trash, bring in groceries. He doesn't wash any of the dishes. He uses everything. One day we were on a field trip to school and I was sitting next to the horse girl named Beth. It was the most depressing ride ever because she kept neighing and making gallop noises with her shoes. She started aggressively eating something so I looked at her to see her devouring the bus rat that runs across the floor. I started screaming and she was giggling and gobbling that rat like it was a McDonald's double quarter pounder meal deal large with extra pickles and Sprite. There was blood everywhere and everyone was screaming and she started licking her fingers. I told the bus driver and he pulled over and called the police. It turns out she was mentally ill and she stays at a facility now. One time I was at my grandma's because she was helping me with the school bake sale. She was asking me if I had any ideas on what to make and I thought it would be funny to prank her. I said make WAP. And she said WAP? I said it stands for warm apple pies. And her nipples hardened in joy. She began whipping up a batch of apple pies like her life depended on it. And I went and sat in my room. I came back out an hour later and saw she had a whole tray of apple pies and she wrote WAP all over them. And she made WAP banners. I told her it was just a joke and it's not what she thinks it means. And she slapped me across the face and told me not to get involved. She set up her spot at my school's bake sale and started screaming come eat my WAP kids. Please come here and try my delicious warm WAP. WAP 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 Everyone started laughing at her but at the end of the day she racked up the most sales out of all the soccer moms there. She later spray painted WAP on her old creepy van and she now drives around the neighborhood screaming come up to my van and try my WAP to innocent children playing in their front yards. Can I have your name, please? Sure, it's Sarah Mitchell. Oh, slow down, slow down, please. First name? Sarah. Can you spell that, please? S-A-R-E-H. Ma'am, I said slow down, please. Come on. S. S as in salsa? Yes. A. A as in avocado? Yes. R. R as in rancho dressing? 
A. A as in asado? Yep, and H. H as in hot tamale? Yes, as in hot tamale. The difference between best friends and regular friends. If you fall as your friend, I will help you up and then I might, you know, giggle or something. But as your best friend, if you fall, I am going to be crying laughing. And once I finish laughing, then I'll help you get up. Friends ask you to come over. Best friends just... Hey, yo, I know you in there. Best friends can get away with a lot more than regular friends can. For instance, if I'm eating something and, you know, I'm about to finish it and it's like the last bite and my best friend goes and it falls out my hand, I'm going to laugh. But now if my friend does that, oh, I might just kill you. With friends, you have to keep in contact with them. You know, you have to talk to them pretty consistently to keep the friendship going. With your best friend, y'all can go like three months with no conversation and then start talking again, and it's like you never stop talking. And lastly, the way I work, I'm more mean to my best friend than anyone else because my meanness is how I show my love. So when I call my best friend and say, hey, yo, what up, stupid? He knows to respond. Hey, yo, what up, dummy? Because that's just how we talk. Thank you for your time. We were in class. I was in band at the time and the classroom phone rang and the teacher went and he answered the phone He got really serious. He got this really concerned Shocked look on his face and he hung it up and he turned to us and he said everybody sit down be quiet The bell's going to ring in a couple minutes You're going to stay seated and then he went over to the doors and he locked them and we were just like Oh shit, what is happening? And at first some of us were like, well is it a bomb threat? Because we used to get bomb threats all the time, but then we realized that doesn't make sense because when we get a bomb threat, they evacuate us. And then we're like, is there some type of killer in the school? Is there a weather alert? Is there a terrorist attack? And none of us knew anything. The teacher wouldn't answer any questions. He was told not to. And the bell rang. We all stayed seated and we sat there for a really really long time and then the next bell rang which means a whole other class period had passed and still he said stay seated and i can't tell you how long we were trapped in this room and nobody was telling us what was going on we're all getting really scared and panicking because we had never because we had never had a situation like this and we had practiced so many drills so many if there's a bomb we all go to the band lot if there's a tornado we all go to the basement if there's a fire we take these exits on this side and we always had a plan, and this was just something that we had never planned, and nobody was telling us anything. So eventually, they're texting their parents and calling their parents, and they're saying, do you know anything about this? And the parents are all freaking out, and now it's like an ordeal. Some of the parents started listening to the police scanners, and it was getting back to us that there were ambulances outside of our school, and we're just like... And at this point, a lot of us are panicking because they're, we think there's some type of shooter or something because that makes sense. Like, okay, the doors are locked. They're telling us to be quiet. They're telling us not to move. They're telling us not to leave. There's ambulances outside. And finally, they just open the doors and let us go. And they wouldn't tell us anything still. So we're just like, okay, we just sat in this classroom for like hours. There's ambulances outside of our school and you're just going to room for like hours. There's ambulances outside of our school and you're just gonna let us go to our next class? So you can probably tell by the title of this video what happened. A girl died in class during school hours. And here's the story on that. So earlier in that day, around like first, second period, somebody sold her a bunch of Oxycontins. She, during school, took all of them. She ended up going to her seventh period class at third period and she walked in and the teacher was like, honey, why? Are, what are you doing here? And she said, oh, I'm here for class. And the teacher was like, you're not here until later, honey. It's only third period. And I wasn't here for this, but supposedly when she walked away, she said to somebody else, oh, she's she's on something or she's drunk or something. But it was, it was obvious that she was on something. So she went a couple classes later and she put her head down on the desk. She was sleeping and she was just kind of one of those students who, you know, showed up late and slept in class. Obviously didn't show a ton of interest in her. He was an amazing teacher. He was a caring teacher, but he didn't wake her up for I don't know what reason it was. I don't know if he just thought, you know, you can only try so hard to make somebody interested in class. I don't know if he figured, you know what, she could really use the sleep, just let her nap. But that class was over and the bell rang and everybody got up, but she stayed seated laying on her desk like this with her head down and she wasn't getting up. So somebody who was sitting next to her nudged her and was like, hey, wake up, class is over. And she didn't move. And then she nudged her a little harder to wake her up. And that is when her arm fell completely limp to the side of the desk. So obviously at this point, people start panicking. They roll her over and she is completely blue. I don't know how long she was out. I don't know how long she wasn't breathing, but she had completely OD'd and had not been receiving oxygen for enough time to turn her blue. That is when the ambulances were called. That is when the school was put on lockdown. She was taken out obviously and she died that day. There's a story time that happened in second grade. So my teacher never allowed fidget spinners. 
and my friend always brought one to school because that was the only thing that helped us focus. But every time she saw it, she would take it and she would never return it even though she said she was. So me and my friend, I'm gonna call her Jalen and my other friend, I'm gonna name her Caitlin. So me, Jalen, and Caitlin all had this plan to sneak into school and take our fidget spinners. So at recess, we had this plan spot behind the tree and we would all talk about it. This girl even didn't eat her lunch because her teacher took away her fidget spinner. Anyway, we all had this plan to sneak in school and break in, break the windows, go in class and steal all our fidget spinners and give them back to the owners. But every time we talk about it, we'd get caught by this one kid named Nathan, and he would all go tell the teacher. But the teacher didn't care, obviously, because she knew we weren't going to do it. Do you mind doing an Indian accent? Sure, of course. Great. Ready when you are. Listen, Karen, the manager isn't here. Could you add more accent? Listen, Karen, that was just louder. Uh, are you even putting on an accent? Oh, <laughs> I don't need to put it on. I am Indian. How would your dad say it? Listen, Karen, the manager isn't here. Sorry, I'm still not hearing the accent. No, that's how he talks. He has a lower voice. Uh, how would somebody from India say it? Ingapari, Karen. Manager Ingilla. Was that Indian? Oh, that was Tamil. It's one of the many languages spoken in India. Indian accent? Oh! You want me to do the stereotypical accent that everybody thinks we sound like because that's what Hollywood has normalized. Yes, I'm gonna have to pass. It pays 10,000. Listen, Karen, the manager isn't here. 